I'm Ashton Addison from BlockQuest Capital for Investment Pitch Media. And today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Alex Schor, CEO and co founder of Collective Intelligence Labs. Alex, welcome to the show and great to see you again. Thank you, Ashton. Good to see you too. And always a pleasure to talk to you. Likewise, a lot's happened since we last spoke. Uh, the Web3 industry continues to grow, uh, DeFi continues to explode, and we're looking for mo more options to bring that to the mainstream and bring a more interoperable and holistic ecosystem within DeFi. Uh, and I, from what I understand, Collective Intelligence Labs is really helping with this, the future is multi-chain. And being able to connect the different isolated silos of DeFi uh, together, I think it's going to take the next step towards mainstream adoption of blockchain technology. So I'm super excited for our discussion. Uh, let's just kick it off right from the top level on what you and your team have been building at Collective Intelligence Labs and how that relates to the multi-chain future. And then we'll dive into all the details. Yeah, thank you, Esten. So yeah, indeed, uh, multi-chain is the future and we've been thinking about this a lot. So we all want our apps to be deployed on multi-chain. We don't want it to just exist in one ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And it's not yet the case. We need either to deploy it in multiple ecosystems, interconnect, and this interconnectivity is quite limited. So a lot of companies work on how to achieve this multi-chain. And we've been thinking about this as well. And basically, we were able to come up with a, like we call it complete industry architecture, because basically it allows to unite all the players and you deploy your D app just once. You deploy it mm -hmm. on the whole Web3 mm -hmm. and underlying logic, balance it, it can like, redeploy it into different blockchains. So you like as a developer, as a user experience, you just like mint your NFT in Web3. You, mm -hmm. you create your DAO in Web3 and you don't even know where it's been executed. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. like ultimate uh, user experience we want for Web3. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's uh, a dream come true because I know there's a lot of isolated silos and it's hard to transfer assets between blockchains. And <clears throat> from what I understand, there's still a lot of uh, hacks and exploits through the bridge technology that people are using to try and move uh, assets through. Uh, never mind the, the compatibility of the decentralized applications themselves. From what I understand, you have to relaunch on different platforms and it's sort of hard to connect them all together. Uh, why do you think this hasn't been done sooner? I mean, because DeFi has been growing since, you know, mainly since 2020. We have a few years now under our belt, uh, yet we still see uh, a lot of fragmentation throughout the ecosystem. Yeah, that's right. So basically, uh, all the bridges, all the current technologies are still just hot fix. It's not a complete multi-chain. It's not a complete interconnectivity uh, because we still need to move these assets from one to another. So your asset either exists on one chain or another chain. Your uh, like NFT either exists on one chain or another chain. But what we want to achieve and like what we architecture we come up with, basically your asset exist on all blockchains simultaneously on multiple blockchains simultaneously mm -hmm. and uh, the question of data consistency is resolved through next two layers through relay layer and core layer mm -hmm. and maybe i should highlight a little bit about the whole layered architecture so basically it's important to understand that uh, in complete web3 architecture we have uh, there's like five layers application aggregation execution, relay layer, and core layer. And this mm -hmm. is like a uh, holistic uh, overview, holistic infrastructure necessary to deploy your D app, deploy your any smart contract on all blockchains simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, no, I know it gets complex. Um, and thank you for explaining those five layers. How long has your team sort of been working on this and where exactly is it at right now? Yeah, to be honest, we've been working on this for already like a couple of years. So we had this idea about how to interconnect multiple blockchains, like at least multiple blockchains. We were thinking about this a lot. Mm -hmm. And we first came up with multi-relay architecture is when one blockchain can be connected to multiple relays, which is not the case even now. So like, for example, to Polkadot and Kutsama simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And we came up with this 
and it already was quite a breakthrough for us. Like mm -hmm. it, it happened maybe I don't know, like, uh, uh, about two years ago. But possible to uh, uh, like unite all the networks because even if you connect multiple blockchains to one relay, uh, there's still incentive to create different ecosystem, different like uh, segregated environments, and. Aha moment was when we, uh, yeah, when we started to question where, if there is even a need of, uh, of a token, of a central mm -hmm. token in this whole architecture. And I came up with a conclusion that there is no need for a central token, but there is a need for institution to govern mm -hmm. the whole infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But there is no need for a central token. And this is uh, this uh, only this innovation, only this like insight. Uh, allowed to unite all the players, all the ecosystem mm. into one single network. Mm -hmm. Okay, good to know. And <clears throat> when you're looking at making that compatibility with other blockchains, for example, Polkadot and Kusama, uh, or with Ethereum, do you actually have to work with the layer one protocols and they have to implement some kind of technology t that is compatible with uh, Collective Intelligence Labs? Or is it sort of a decentralized nature and you're able to do it you know, without their, you know, permissionless, so to say. Yeah, so we will be able to deploy our primitives to Ethereum and it will become a comp compatible with Web3 architecture. So, mm -hmm. and there will be two simultaneous processes. So we do deploy these primitives, but there also should be a standardization of these primitives. So like what is the actual primitive, which is a standard for the whole Web3? Mm -hmm. And that's why we're also creating uh, a DAO, a council, which will be applying these standards, which will include players from different industry uh, participants and uh, influencers, technologists, who will decide what is actually standard. What's the standard for data format? What's the standard for NFT? What is the standard for private key? And this is like uh, this is like a necessary step to unite all the networks because we only mm -hmm. can unite them when we have like some standardized uh, like pipeline of technologies. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Definitely. And are you focused on the development and, and launching of the decentralized applications primarily, um, and then moving that into digital assets and uh, crypto coins and NFTs and things like that? Or um, are you focused on it all at once, or is there a priority in which to make cross-compatible first? Uh, yeah, we have our own roadmap. So right now, we're just focused on building first infrastructure prototype, which will allow you to mint NFTs on, mm. on multiple networks simultaneously. So basically, this is like will be the first prototype. You mint NFT, and you don't even know where it's minted because you don't care. Like uh, where where the buyer is buying, uh, there it's minted there. So this is like will be the first prototype of uh, CIL Collective Knowledge Labs multi chain. Mm -hmm. And um, and then we will integrate more and more capabilities with DAO, uh, basically allowing you to create a decentralized organizations and like and eventually allowing you to create any kind of applications on top of this uh, multi-chain, on top of this mm -hmm. uh, Web3 meta, meta protocol. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how do you measure the the security of you know the you know, if you're looking at minting on Ethereum, you're sort of looking at, you know, the market cap and the consensus of validating transactions on Ethereum. Same for Polkadot. Um, if you're minting through collective intelligence labs, trying to go to multiple blockchains, you know, what's the underlying security protocol that sort of governs that minting and security process? Yeah, this is actually a very good question because, like, in uh, this, like, uh, Web3 architecture we have, users even do not directly interact with blockchain. They always interact with blockchain through aggregation layer. So when mm. you send an operation, a transaction to mint NFT, it's first landed in aggregation layer. An aggregation layer is connected to multiple blockchains and there is a decentralized router. And router knows uh, which is the most optimal blockchain to execute exactly your operation. So, because like for some operations it might be cheap on one, for some mm -hmm. it might be cheap on another one, and it also knows what data is necessary for execution, and it knows, for example, that this blockchain does have this data and this does not have this data, mm -hmm. and if some blockchain doesn't have not have all the data, it will cause interchain communication, which is more expensive, mm -hmm. compared without it. So this is like 
the job of this router to estimate the most optimal way of the execution and the router operator uh, who owns this router making money on the difference from mm -hmm. estimation and actual execution cost. Okay, so there would still be, you know, say it shows uh, the the Polkadot ecosystem for, for minting, it would still be the underlying security uh, and like the transaction cost <clears throat> would be the same. You know, obviously the ease of use and interoperability would be great, but like the cost of minting uh, NFT chosen through the Polkadot ecosystem, it would be the same cost if you went directly there and tried the, the longer, harder route to mint it. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. That's right. It, uh, it in the first yes, but in once this protocol is launched and implemented, the cost of operating on Web3 will be dramatically decreased mm -hmm. because this thing will create a competition between all the blockchains for the cost-effective execution, which is not the case right now. Because mm -hmm. when you locked in the ecosystem, like you locked, and like if even price is high, like is Ethereum, you still mm -hmm. locked in the ecosystem. You have to upgrade there. But mm -hmm. when there is like, imagine there's like millions of transactions going through decentralized router and it's finding a most optimal way for execution. So now every blockchain is incentivized to create really fast execution of the, these uh, and efficient and cheap execution of these transactions. This is like what we believe will lead to dramatic, dramatic drop of cost of execution on, in the whole web stream. And mm -hmm. talking about security, you actually get in a combined security of all these networks. Because even if Ethereum fails fully, like like fully mm -hmm. disappear, this thing will still be operating because it has this data in like mm -hmm. different blockchains. Which is on the blockchains which we don't even know yet, uh, like not yet created. Because mm -hmm. once the ecosystem becomes healthy and there is healthy competition and, and people know what they compete on. There will be many more businesses and entrepreneurs and technologists coming mm -hmm. to the industry to create really better infrastructure and really compete for these operations, for these transactions. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's incredible. Let's hope Ethereum doesn't disappear overnight like that, but um, it's great to have those fail-safe <laughs> uh, mechanisms in there, Alex. And yeah. You know, I was speaking to some other companies recently about you know, just the growth in Layer 1 and Layer 2 networks. And he was mentioning that they had partnered with over 40 Layer 1 networks. And I feel like the amount of Layer 1 networks is getting ridiculous. Um, and, and hopefully there's some kind of saturation point where there's not 200 different blockchains. Um, but with that said, with your team's technology, are you do you focus on, you know, a specific three or four layer ones to start um, and you know make, make sure you work out the uh, the fine details of it uh, and perfect that um, or you know where is the starting point for all of this interoperability uh, for your team's focus yeah so uh, we have a strategy so we can implement these primitives in different blockchains and this will already make them compatible with this web3 meta protocol but obviously we think that it makes sense to first focus on evm uh, implementation because we can do it once and deploy multiple chains mm -hmm. and also uh, probably uh, vasam or cosmos or mm -hmm. substrate based implementation we're still deciding about the, this second priority uh, but yeah there's like advantages and disadvantages but once mm -hmm. this protocol is implemented and it becomes a standard all the blockchains will be incentivized to implement it themselves. Uh, so yeah, and and I will not worry about having like forty or like even thousand player ones because like I'm sure there will be like maybe thousand even. Mm -hmm. uh, and w we do not call them layer ones. We call them execution layer chains because mm -hmm. like in our architecture it's execution layer, mm -hmm. and it's actually a more correct name because like L1 doesn't give you like a functional information about what it actually does in in the whole system. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, so once you, as a user, you're not exposed to layer one. Yeah, once, you, once you're not exposed to execution layer chain, you don't care how many of them. Because mm -hmm. like now, when you're exposed, you need to handle all this like like interoperability. You need to transfer from Z one to Z one. You need to have funds there, wallet there. Like it becomes crazy. But yeah, it's it's just like we are now talking with you. And we don't know whether our data is processed by Netherlands data server or like mm -hmm. where. Like we, yeah. Why should we know? You know, and the same should be in the stream.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great analogy. And with 2023, the, the market's already turning around. It's looking great. Uh, DeFi is looking strong as it continues to grow. Uh, this narrative for interoperability, security and privacy, I feel like will only continue as well. So I feel like it's a good time for you and your team to continue growing. Uh, what are some of the major initiatives that you're looking to get out next throughout 2023 on the roadmap? Yeah, so one of the major initiatives right now for us uh, is uh, launching Web3 architecture design session because we realized that this whole like Web3 protocol, meta protocol is so big and it was so many like participants that we should be a collective effort of designing it. And we inviting top experts in the world to help with detailization of this protocol because we have high level architecture. Now we need a specification for every layer, for every layer uh, node, for every layer cluster. And uh, once we have it, it will lead to implementation of this specification into different protocols and creation of new businesses. So this uh, architecture design session will be held every month and will be basically a vehicle for implementation of this meta protocol. And we as a company, of course, we will be doing our own uh, businesses like on an execution layer, on a publication layer, on uh, aggregation layer, because we also want to uh, first of all build businesses within this ecosystem, within this meta protocol. But also we uh, want to launch a console. We want to launch this DAO, uh, mm-hmm. and we're already launching it, which will be uh, steering this uh, ecosystem, steering Web3 ecosystem. And this DAO is being already launched. It's Collective Notice Council, and it now has 19 members, and we will be onboarding more and more and more members there. So we want to reach, like, also, like, more, be more in- inclusive. Uh, and this is, like, also one of the important goals for us to grow the council, to grow the DAO. Mm-hmm. Oh, looking forward to it. Um, and I can leave the links uh, for that in the description box as well. To- is there another place that the viewers can follow along and just learn more about the, the architecture layers and follow along with these updates that you're talking about? Sure, I think like it's the best place is to subscribe to our Twitter and Telegram. We just started it recently and we will continue publishing information there. Or just follow me on Twitter. Sounds great, Alex. I can leave the uh, Collective Intelligence Labs uh, platform and the Twitter in the description box below and your Twitter as well. Uh, pleasure speaking with you. This is a great initiative that I think is a step in the right direction towards a more multi-chain and an easy to use uh, ecosystem for, for blockchain, which hopefully can bring uh, more of the masses into Web3 and lower those barriers to entry. So thank you so much for the work that you're doing. Alex, all the best on Collective Intelligence Labs moving forward and let's follow up in the near future. Sounds good. And thank you for your time. Thank you for this opportunity. Would love to talk to you next time.